All right, guys, it's Coach Z here, Coach James, uh, being a great partner as always. Mullet's flying high, right? Bald head looking good and shiny. And uh, virus free right now. Hopefully, you are too at home. Another Z tail for you uh, concerning top side half guard. Top side half guard. Now, we know I want to win this inside space. He wants to win that inside space. And I talked about this a little bit in prior videos. What happens if he gets this underhook on me? If he comes up and gets this underhook, first off, I got to survive. So right away, obviously my base should be strong so I don't just fall over. But before he gets too deep, I start getting my frames in. Get my frames in, don't let him get too deep yet. Notice I'm in front of his face, essentially doing what a cross face does, but I'm making a frame so he can't get his head in. And if I stay here too long, he'll probably get what he wants, but he'll drop down to my single leg or go underneath me. Uh, and he goes different routes, the path of least resistance, in order to get me in a compromised situation, right? So immediately, I'm gonna turn my hips and I'm just gonna drive into him. Look where my chest, usually you think that you wanna go here. Everybody thinks my pressure needs to go to his chest and to his head. I'm fighting that guy right there, right? That's emotional, get past that, get composed. That's not the problem. I'm not thinking about him as a person, I'm thinking about him as a problem that I need to find solutions to. Adjust my weight distribution, go towards his belt line on his hips, I push across, and I sprawl out and give myself a wide base, right? I'm still hooked to his leg. I want to be here right now. That's good. If I pass, maybe we'll make some space and he'll get out and be, become a scramble. Right now, I'm good being there. So I'll go downside and I pinch. Turn this way. I'm locking my elbow in tight to him and I'm controlling this wrist where he had that underhook before. Now, essentially, he's got a dead underhook. If he tries to push off this leg and push up, I can capture this leg, right? Push off that leg again, he's trying to buck. I pull that leg up, I take that leg away. Now he's, he's kind of powerless, and he doesn't have that arm. He can push my back with his other arm, trying to roll this way, but it's hard to roll when I keep adjusting my weight here and leaning back. Make sure I don't lean back too far and get to this position right, but if I did, it'd be hard without this leg. So I've got a control measure here. Eventually, I want to get control of this wrist, right? Into my Kimura position, right? So what I do, if I sit here, slide back this way a little bit there. I pin it, I start weaving in, and I use this elbow aligned with his, el his elbow as my little kickstand. Making sure my weight's back, obviously, not getting too uh, light in my hips. And I pin, and I get my position. And when he feels me get this, it's a lot of times where he'll do his little bucking or moving, and whenever I feel that opportunity, I pin to the mat. I don't worry about anything else but pinning to the mat. And then I rest, take a breath. Adjust my position, get heavy, right? Make sure my hips are back so he can't just lift my hips even. My hips get too light, he can push me inside of his guard, he can take my back from here even. I've had it done to me, right? So I'm just staying tight, I'm managing this time, maintaining my efforts and not losing my base. And now, a lot of guys, especially strong guys, they don't put their arm tight. They think they're stronger if they start stretching it out. And of course I can turn it into the, the old arm bar from here. But what people don't understand, they think they're gonna finish the career by having it close to his back. Well, the floor gets in my way, right? And I'm still in his half guard. So I can't really walk around his head right now, but I wanna let him get extended a little bit. Now, once he's extended, I've got an even better leverage advantage on his shoulder, which that's what I'm attacking with this, with this submission, right? It's out, and he'll tell you right now, he's tapping. That's all I had to do. I'm not even revving my wrist or anything. Right? I'm just turning because I have such a leverage advantage extended way out here. Tight, I, this is still a good position. If I have to stay here, I can manage this because it's not bad for me, but it's hard to finish from here with that floor in the way, and especially if you still have my leg. Get it out, make sure my base is strong, give yourself some room, and finish the submission. Right? Come on up. So, contrary to popular belief, let me slide over there. Tight is not always better, it depends on what you want. In the prior video, we talked about keeping that tight, that Kimura lock tight, pushing it into his waist or his hip. Um, if I was arresting somebody, right, I would want it real tight up behind their back, right? But he can tell you this causes more uh, pain to your shoulder than this, really, right? You can take that for a little while, and the floor helps you. But out here, when I start turning, right, he doesn't have a, a lot of room to, to to be manipulated without causing some kind of pain or feeling 
kind of weird right at that moment. And the, the good thing about it too is, if he gets here and you're not finished with steel and he straightens all the way out, thumb up, then it turns right into that arm bar that everybody pretty much knows from that convert position when a guy straightens his arm out fighting. But the key to this and where everybody messes this up is not in getting a hold of that convert, but by giving up their base. Right? They get focused on that arm, they forget about keeping their hips back, staying low, compressing that space, owning that space, stomach to stomach, and they let him, and a smart guy on the bottom, he'll start messing with your base, kick his legs around, put, take your back. Like I said before, I had my good friend Earl, uh, one of the black belts that taught me, he's taking my back on that position because I got a little light in the hips. But you live and learn, that's what we're doing, we're doing for you here. Hopefully you take this little detail, add it to your game, get a lot more finishes on that half guard position from that top side or bottom side and uh, take your game a little bit further. And when you come back to the mats after all this is said and done, we'll implement it and see how you do. Anything to add, Coach James? No, that's great. Great details. Or details. All right, we'll see you next time. Tune in to Facebook.